Hey, welcome back to another episode of Tech Talk. I am your host, Jeff Hootsell, Chief Cloud Officer with Automax. As you guys know and have tuned in and seen some of our shows in the past, Tech Talk is a conversation show. We chat with IT leaders and subject matter experts, really in, a, in all fields of technology. Chat with them about current events, and we'll talk to them about just some new and exciting things that are happening, both in their companies and in the industry as a whole. So we've, we've always got fantastic guests on the show. Today is no different. Today we're welcomed by uh, Kevin Fink. Kevin is a CTO with Lighter Capital from Seattle, Washington. So, Kevin, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, it looks beautiful out there in Seattle this morning. Weather's, weather's nice? It is beautiful. It is yeah, a I beautiful like morning. You might be our first outdoor interview, getting back to nature a little bit. I like that. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> well, in, in Seattle, we have uh, two seasons. We have uh, the rainy season. That's you know most of the year. And then we have a, a few weeks or maybe a month or two of just the best weather you can imagine. So if it's nice out, you got to take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. So, hey, Kevin, maybe from the start, for folks that aren't familiar with Lighter Capital, maybe you can tell them a little bit about it and kind of what your mission is as a company. Sure. So Lighter Capital is a, an alternative capital provider. Um, essentially, we provide loans to mostly startup businesses, uh, definitely growth businesses. Um, and the, the primary product, we have a couple different products. The primary product that we're known for is revenue-based financing. So revenue-based financing is when your payments are a function of your revenue uh, rather than a you know, fixed monthly amount. And this, uh, this allows the company to you know, scale very rapidly uh, because they have that growth capital available to them. Uh, but if they have you know, a lot of seasonality in their business model or if they have you know, good months and bad months, then you know, they don't have a big loan payment to make in a bad month and they can afford to make a, a larger payment in a good month. So it, it helps, helps growth stage companies uh, uh, grow. Yeah, Kevin, I imagine right now your portfolio of companies has to be you know, happy for that model with everything that's going on you know, through the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, is that something you guys are seeing has been a, a positive benefit for your uh, customers today? Absolutely. Um, in fact, you know, because of the nature of the companies that we have, you know, you know roughly half or, or a bit more than that, maybe 60% of them are actually doing quite well. Right? We have a lot of SaaS businesses. Um, you know, it's mostly, mostly online. So the nature of our portfolio is that most of them are doing pretty well. Um, but there certainly are cases uh, where, you know, they were in, you know, servicing the hospitality business or uh, some of the harder hit segments um, and there you know they may have little or no revenue and so having little or no loan payments from us is is certainly helpful to them and we work very closely with them to sort of help them figure out you know how do they um, uh, you know, manage through this um, whether that's cutting expenses or or um, you know obviously you know, directly benefiting from our, our RBF um, works out well for them. Yeah, and, and you know it probably better than anybody. The startup world is, is not an easy one, even in the best of times. Uh, I know you've got a great background and have held a lot of different type positions in the in your past, but I know you've always been kind of passionate about that startup type environment. Uh, so talk about that a little bit, especially from being an IT leader. What's what's that like? You know, leading in a startup environment and kind of the nature of that. Yeah, so I've certainly been my, my the first company I, I co-founded in 1995. We took it public in '99, so you can uh, you know add a year or two there, and you can imagine what happened. Um, so <laughs> we've certainly been through that process. Um, I was uh, with another company, Demand Media, also a you know a early stage startup um, in the you know mid 2000s uh, through 2008. Uh, we took that one public as well uh, after that. Um, so I think virtually every company I've ever been a part of has had ups and downs, whether that's you know, due to broader market forces like you know, this, uh, you know, Corona induced recession or, uh, you know, the dot com bust or the 2008 crisis due to the, the financial markets and real estate markets, um, or just, I mean, it's, it's a startup, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out your, your product market fit. You're trying to figure out you know, the right technology, the right marketing. Uh, and you're going to have booms and busts, you know, even without those external market forces. So, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty typical thing. And, and figuring out, um, you know, along with the rest of the business leaders, you know, how should you address these things? At what point are you really investing in longer term R&D, shorter term R&D, um, really focused on the day to day you know, tactics of keeping the systems up and running? Uh, so it, it, there's a lot of variety. Um, and some of that is. Is, is due to that change in, in a business climate, a business environment. 
Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, I think so, so we talked to a lot of CIOs, a lot of folks that are in either the startup environment or even more well-established kind of growth companies. You know, as they're going through everything we're going through now, they're really having to stop and go back and kind of reassess um, from a prior, priority standpoint, you know, where do they spend their budget? All these projects and things they had on the slate for, for 2020, what's, what's that look like now as we're kind of coming out of this? You know, we're coming into the next phase of it. You know, if, if you were talking to those folks and kind of giving them some counsel or talking about your past experience, you know, what do you think are some of the most important things right now for an IT leader of, a, of the kind of a high growth company like that? Yeah, so it's an interesting balance because, you know, you have to keep the company alive, right? You know, a lot of startups have, you know, relatively low runway, you know, uh, some of ours have, or some of our portfolio companies have, you know, a few months of runway, um, given this, uh, and, uh, you know, some maybe have out to 18 years, or obviously we have some profitable companies. Um, we are ourselves a startup, so we also have, you know, looking at that from a similar perspective. And there's an interesting balance between, what is your long-term success versus what is your you know day-to-day -day operating? So really looking at that and figuring out, okay, well, what is the minimum runway that we need in order to survive as a company, um, but not necessarily go beyond that um, and really focus on, well, what are your long-term possibilities? You, you know, they, 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 I don't remember who said it, but uh, you know, they, there's a, a saying about you know great companies are built out of out of uh, recessions and other uh, tough times. And uh, in order to be one of those great companies, you have to survive those tough times, but you also have to take advantage of those tough times. So um, you know, that, that's the big thing is really think about well, how do you survive, but how do you prosper coming out of this? Because we will come out of it. it you know, this, is, this one in particular is a little bit different from you know, some of the past where um, you know, the external economic climate was very strong prior to this. Um, there's no particular reason to believe that it's going to be less. In fact, from a, um, you know, a, a more local perspective, I think it will, will come out stronger. Uh, so thinking about those things and how things are going to look in the, um, in the I hate to say it, but new normal, um, and how can you provide value in that? Um, it's a, a great exercise to do at any point in time, but particularly when there's a lot of a flux going on, it's the best time to do that kind of exercise. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think you go back and look at the list of you know past events that we've had, whether it's been you know recessions or dot com busts or other you know economic you know hard times, and some of the companies have been birthed out of those. You know, it's really the guys that have, that have taken that as the opportunity, like you said, to to be innovative, to look for that competitive advantage. Now they can almost not take advantage of the situation, but that's really probably an accurate statement of how can we take advantage of the situation they're in and, and provide a service that's going to be really valuable. Um, and I know you guys at Letter Capital, you guys continue to innovate as well. Um, you guys are working on some new things within the company also, some new uh, new solutions and kind of new platforms. Talk to us a little bit about that, if you can share anything, maybe a sneak preview. Sure, sure. So we've been working on, on something that's kind of interesting uh, based on you know, the way the revenue-based financing works is that we need access to the financials of our portfolio companies. Um, you know, that's how we can tell how much should we build them each month. And it, uh, you know, obviously our models are very contingent on their finances and we keep those updated. So we have very good access to both financial and transactional data from our portfolio companies, um, as well as from other companies that have shared it with us. And we use that internally you know, to provide, you know, insights for our underwriters and, and uh, IT team. But we also now are considering using that uh, for both helping those companies because it gives them a very standardized and comparable view of their financials. Um, you know, we can do uh, cohort analysis for them so they can see uh, how they compete with their peers on, from a financial perspective. Um, as well as from you know other other data associated with the with their business, and we can also provide similar information, obviously on a um, uh, you know, a, a basis of the company allowing them to do so uh, to potential investors. So we have a, you know, a relatively small credit box. Um, there's certain types of companies that we can fund and certain amounts that we can fund, uh, but obviously there's you know a broad range of of investors out there that can provide all kinds of different uh, different revenue or sorry, a different capital. And uh, they're you know, largely all interested in these same types of metrics that uh, we are collecting and consolidating and, and providing, visualizing and building models on top of. So we're working on a platform that will allow 
companies to participate in that you know, completely outside of working with us as a capital provider um, and investors, whether they're, you know, venture capitalists or uh, angel investors or uh, PE firms or whoever is interested in providing those traditional banks um, that provide loans uh, can provide that, uh, that basis to them to be able to see and compare um, whether it's their portfolio or whether from a sourcing perspective, uh, looking outside of their portfolio to companies they might want to invest in. So that's something we have it in, in uh, private beta right now. Um, uh, it's getting great reception to it, so it's pretty exciting. Uh, we're planning on a you know late Q3, early Q4 kind of public rollout. Uh, we'll see how things go, and uh, so we're yeah we're very excited about that. We're doing some really interesting things with both visualization and modeling, doing some interesting data science models of that data uh, to allow companies to better understand their positions and uh, investors to understand who might be interesting to them and fit into their uh, their portfolio. Yeah, it's really interesting. It seems like a really compelling product and a lot of insights you'll be able to gather from, from harnessing that data that you guys have today. So very, very cool stuff. Kevin, it's, it's always great chatting with you. I know you've got a great, uh, some great insights just from your experience and things like that today. And we obviously love what Lighter Capital is doing. You help kind of promote and support the startup climate and some of these kind of the future companies of tomorrow. So, so we definitely appreciate you having, having you on the show today. If people want to find out more about Lighter Capital, where can they go to uh, find out more about your company? Yeah, I think, I mean, the website, lightercapital.com uh, is, is a great place to start. Um, and uh, yeah, that's probably the best. All right. Awesome. Well, Kevin, hey, thanks so much for joining us today. Glad you're enjoying some awesome weather out there in Seattle. You know, hopefully we'll get to uh, see you in person sometime soon. But thanks for everything today and uh, stay safe out there. Thanks, Jeff. Great talking to you. Oh, you got it. Hey, and thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of Tech Talk. As always, we, we appreciate you showing up here and watching us every week. Check out some of our other interviews online and uh, check out Kevin's company and some of the great things they're doing at Lighter Capital. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.